before we get started, I'd better address the elephant in the room. Yes, I cut my hair. No, I'm not having an emotional breakdown and it's basically just because it was getting caught and everything and was driving me crazy, was taking so much time to make look half decent. Yes, the bob it is and I am channeling Catherine Mansfield. This has nothing to do with having watched Carol, the film, maybe a few too many times. So this is the first part of my January wrap up. I started the year with a graphic novel or a, a volume of comics. I think that's the, the correct terminology. This was Ms. Marvel, which is Marvel comic, and it's about an Indian woman or girl, young woman, who gets superpowers, and I'm sure you all know about this. Lots of people have been talking about it. It's it's really great. It's definitely one of the more enjoyable graphic novels that I've read. So yeah, I would I would highly recommend this. I don't have the physical copy because I thought I would try out Marvel Unlimited on my phone, which it turns out is not really for me. I don't like reading on my phone and it turns out that the same goes for comics really. But I really enjoyed volume one and I think I may well pick up the second volume in a physical form. The second book that I read was a novel and this was actually a novelization, which is not something that I've ever read before. The film was Crimson Peak, which I thoroughly enjoyed. In fact, I hauled a really beautiful big book in my last video, which was all about the art and, and sort of cinematic world of Crimson Peak. I was really surprised by this. I listened to it as an audiobook because I thought that if I didn't like it then I could return it. Obviously I knew the plot having already seen the film but this just gave that extra layer of detail so if you're a fan of the film I would definitely watch the film first and then if you're interested in those extra little bits and, and explanations about things, but I would say that it's more for fans of the film rather than a standalone novel in itself. Although it was surprisingly well written, uh, there were a few things that bugged me about it. One being that it, it's a pet peeve in, in books in general when there are literary references, except the author feels it's necessary to explain the literary references. And that really annoys me, particularly when it's about novels that are really well known, like gothic novels, which is something that this book really references and the film really references. I can't remember the exact examples, but it was things like Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre, and I just feel like those are well enough known that you can assume a certain level of knowledge from the reader, even if they haven't read them themselves. Anyway, the next book that I read was also an audiobook, and I can really recommend it in this form. This was Our Endless Numbered Days by Claire Fuller, which is a book, again, that I have been meaning to read for ages. It's one of Jen's favourites. I know that it was on her favourite list of last year. This is a novel that's centred around this little girl, and her father takes her into the woods one day and tells her that the world has ended and there's this sort of void around them and basically they've got this little patch of land, they've got this little cottage and that's where they stay. I believe it's nine years that they end up staying there and at the beginning of the novel it's when she has escaped from this and realised that the world hasn't ended so it's not a spoiler to say that the, the world hasn't ended. Most of the book though is made up of memories of this time that she spent in the woods with her father and it's, it's a really beautiful, strange, twisted sort of tale. It's also one that can be interpreted in different ways. Actually, Jen did a podcast with Claire Fuller where she interviews her and they, they chat about sort of some of the different ways that the book can be interpreted. So I'll link that down below because it's well worth a listen, whether you've read the book or not, but I think if you've read it then it will be especially rich. The next two books that I read are part of the Arthur Conan Doyle collection. I have The Complete Sherlock Holmes on audiobook. So I thought I'd start working my way through those slowly. I had only read Hand of the Baskervilles before, so I thought it was about time that I read some more Sherlock Holmes. This was also heavily influenced by the fact that the Sherlock special came out at New Year's. So I read A Study in Scarlet, which I enjoyed. I didn't absolutely love it, um, but I, I think that it's again one of those sort of classic classics that is, is really good to have read. I also read The Sign of the Four, which I didn't enjoy as much as A Study in Scarlet. I found it quite sort of fragmented in a way. I didn't really like the way that the story was structured. It, didn't really sit well with me. But the nice thing about reading these stories is that you get some of those references in everyday life and in pop culture in general and also in those 
different um, adaptations of Sherlock Holmes. So I've started listening to some of the short stories as well and I think that will just be an ongoing thing. The next one is one of the most beautiful books on my shelf and I've been meaning to read this for quite some time. I'm so so happy that I did buy this because I very nearly didn't and then I caved in and bought it and oh it's just so delightful. This is of course A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan, author of The Grace Keepers and The Rental Heart and Other Fairy Tales. This is a short story collection. The short stories have this cohesive quality because in between each one you have the context which is two women who are expecting their first child and they are telling stories to this child. They're very much influenced by Scottish folklore and they have that fairy tale sort of structure to them but these are quite different from other fairy tales that I've read or other fairy tale retellings that I've read. The only thing I'd say about this is I probably read it over too long a period of time. I would have enjoyed it more if I'd read it in a couple of sittings. As it was, I ended up reading sort of a story every, every couple of days, which probably wasn't the best way of doing it, especially as it has this cohesive narrative to it. But on the whole, I really love this and it's one that I would like to reread, so I'm so happy that I have the really pretty copy of it. The next book is also a collection of short stories and this was very kindly sent to me by Freight Books, who are a Scottish publisher. And this is Jellyfish by Janice Galloway. I've been meaning to read Janice Galloway for ages and oh, I was not disappointed. This is truly, truly excellent. As always with short story collections, there were a few in here that I didn't quite enjoy as much as the others, but oh, her writing style is just, just so beautiful. A lot of these deal with issues of childhood and dealing with children. I also found that there was a surprising amount of variety in, in this collection as well. This has definitely made me want to read more of Galloway's work and I have one of her novels here actually that I hope to get to before too long. This is Clara and it's all about the composer Clara Schumann. So maybe I will read that after I finish the other book that I'm reading about classical music at the moment. Anyway, the next book was The Blindfold by Siri Hustvedt and Siri Hustvedt is such genius. I really like this as well. I've had a really good reading month this month, can you tell? This is a university novel, which as we know is something that I love reading about, and it also involves women dressing as men, which is something that I find fascinating as well. I almost feel that this book was tailored to me, though there were a few bits that I didn't like quite so much. I didn't give it five stars, but it was excellent nonetheless. It's following this young woman as she sort of descends into what is essentially a, a breakdown. It's told in quite an ambiguous way as well and it's all tied up with her gender identity too. It definitely deals with what it means to project as a certain gender. So if you're interested in those sorts of issues then this is a really fascinating book. Right, so those are the books that I read in the first half of this month. I'm going to cut off now and say goodbye for now. Uh, I will come back and do the second half of my January wrap-up because I've read quite a lot of books, as you can probably tell. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the first half and I will hopefully see you in the second half. Bye.